G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole with updates, where in our first story, OP doesn't want to read at home with their husband because their husband is annoying and it causes problems. If that's relatable, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, smack the like button, and get ready for today's bloody good stories. Let's go. And if it's not relatable, watch anyway. Am I the asshole for reading at home with my husband? I enjoy reading books, but my husband feels that it is rude for me to read when we are both home because I am ignoring him. To be clear, this does not happen in excess by anyone's definition. I have read a maximum of five entire books since we got together a decade ago, primarily to avoid upsetting him. We have very similar work schedules. Recently, I bought a book that was the first in a series of three, and it started this argument to a higher degree than usual because of the fact that it is a series. I have considered going to a cafe and reading in my car, but that seems like a waste of gas when I could just read at home where it's more comfortable anyway. But doing so requires that I tell him I'm about to start reading in the study, bedroom, etc., and that I expect not to be interrupted for the next 30 minutes to an hour, which is what I intend to do if the results here favor me though this will absolutely upset him because he approaches me for comment or to tell stories every 10 to 15 minutes on average. So am I the asshole? And edit, wow, I got a ton of feedback. This will take a while just to read, and I'm sure I can't respond to everything, so I will add a few things here. One, he does the same thing with headphones, but aside from expecting me to be available for immediate comment, he is not abusive in any way. I have friends that I see regularly. I can choose to leave the house without question. I have full access to all financial accounts. I make semi-substantial financial choices. For example, a weekend getaway with friends or buying a new office desk without permission or guilt. This does not involve yelling, but there are guilt trips. They are framed just as what I've expressed here, that he feels ignored and it's rude. Two, he works totally alone, and I do think that is a source of his understandable need for lots of evening and weekend interaction. I just feel this request is an inappropriate expression of that need. 3. No, he doesn't have many friends. Just one, really. Otherwise, it's mostly just my family that he spends time with. His doesn't live nearby, but he gets along really well with mine, and they all genuinely enjoy each other's company. 4. Yes, we do have pets. Five, yes, he has hobbies, but they're easy for him to pick up and to put down without notice. Lots of household projects, carpentry, etc. No, he does not like to watch sports or play video games. Six, we both already have therapists who we have seen bi-weekly for years. It's mainly been individual therapy. Aside from approximately six-month periods of couples therapy during a time of crisis in 2019, and seven, yes, he is able to read, but he has some mild insecurities about his intellectual abilities. Now in the comments, your husband sounds like a piece of work. Read when you want, no announcement needed. Put earbuds in and say they're for white noise. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Depriving you from doing something that you love is notably controlling and restrictive. Doesn't he have things which he likes to do by himself? If the answer is positive, that is an epitome of hypocrisy. Is there any chance that he's jealous of you that you can read and comprehend books and also enjoy it? You have to find the roots of the problem. Tell him to tell you precisely what bothers him in your reading so you can solve this. You don't need to abstain from reading books. That is a wonderful habit and hobby. It's likely that he does this with anything she enjoys that isn't about or with him. My ex did this, told me I was wasting my time, but had zero issue forcing me to watch him play PlayStation for hours on end. This is a massive ass red flag. Not the asshole. Holy potato. What is even wrong with your husband? Is he that insecure that he just won't let you have a few minutes to yourself? Is he that needy? Everyone needs me time. If he doesn't understand it and doesn't want to change, you may rethink that relationship. It's like he doesn't do anything by himself. My husband watches football all day on Sunday. I'll watch one game and I'm done. 
Guess what I do? Find something else to do. Get a mani pedi, have a coffee with a friend, brunch, reading, binge watch Netflix by myself. So much I could possibly do, and it's a break for both of us. Something is seriously wrong with this guy. And now back to the post, we have the update. So after some of this input, I read for about 90 minutes in the bedroom last night. He was watching some TV, and he did ask, you don't want to hang out with me? I said he was welcome to put in headphones and come join me. He said nah, and continued to watch TV. It has me wondering if maybe he saw some of the responses to this thread, because it was unusual. Nevertheless, it went well. I plan to make this part of my Sunday and Wednesday evening routine, until I can trust myself to be more casual about it without giving it up again. To 85% of you, thank you so much. To the other 15% of you, yikes. But such is the internet. What a neat resource. I would never have really known if this was the norm or how other people read for pleasure in their private households without this tidal wave of input. Thanks for these small glimpses into your homes and lives. It's funny what parts of our routines are silently, unintentionally intimate. Annex post is titled, Am I the asshole for turning my stepmom and my dad into laughing stocks in front of the whole family? Recently, my dad and stepmom Sarah decided to renew their vows since they both cheated on their partners because they feel their wedding experience was ruined for them. They wanted a small get together at their house to discuss some plans with the whole family. My wife, 25 female, and I, 30 male, informed them that we couldn't make it because my wife had to attend an engagement party with my mum, 52 female, but they insisted that my wife and my mum come directly to their house after their party. My wife is Indian, so she dressed up in her traditional attire and made my mum wear it too because she really wanted to wear a sari and they both looked gorgeous. So when they arrived at the party, everyone, my dad's side of the family and Sarah's friends, were fawning over them. And if I'm not wrong, some of Sarah's male friends were hitting on my mum. We were just hanging around the living room area when I saw my twin sons, four male, starting a fight because when one of them has something, the other one gets jealous. So I ran to put a stop to them because they might break it, and when I went there, I saw Sarah and my dad just sitting on the sofa. So I asked them what happened, and they told me they feel the attention has been shifted from them. I knew they meant my wife and my mum, and while they were telling me this, my twins started fighting again. So I said, boys, if you don't stop getting jealous of each other like your grandfather and Sarah, I will put all four of you in time out. Some of my dad and Sarah's friends heard it and started laughing, and soon it became a laughing matter. It died down when they announced they were renewing their vows and everything, so the dinner went well and we left. The next day, I get a call from both my dad and Sarah, telling me how much of an asshole I was, and how I made them a laughing stock in front of everyone, so I told them that I wouldn't have done it if they hadn't acted like children. I have been getting texts from my brothers, saying that I was an asshole for ruining their day. So Reddit, am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I feel I might be the asshole because I made everyone laugh at them during their special day. Now in the comments, info. Why did your dad want your mum there? That's the weirdest part of the story. And OP replies, my mum and dad are cordial with each other. They don't have any bad blood, or you could say my saint of a mum forgave him for cheating and holds no resentment towards him or Sarah. Honestly, with the way he's acting, she must have felt like she drew the get out of jail free card. Not the asshole. They had their day on their wedding, and they screwed that up. Why would they want your mother to come to their house to help her plan her ex-husband's vow renewal to his new wife? Good on your mom and wife for stealing the show. They should have accepted that your wife had a previous engagement. Your dad and his wife sound exhausting. Maybe they will stay mad long enough that you will be disinvited to the renewal. Not the asshole. You're an opportunist, not an asshole. Dad and Sarah are only mad because it's true. They'll get over it. Disregard and carry on, I say.
And now on to the update. First, I would like to answer the question about why my mum was invited in the first place. My mum and my dad were good friends before they got together. They had me when they were both 20, and my mum was the primary breadwinner of the family while my dad became a stay-at-home dad. Sarah, my stepmother, was actually our neighbour, and I was around 8 when the cheating happened. My mother and my father separated, and there was no bad blood between them with my mum getting the majority of the custody. Both my parents have put the cheating behind them and a cordial with each other. Second, I would like to thank everyone for their input. I accept that I am the asshole in this situation. The joke was unnecessary and the timing was so bad. I thank the users who pointed out how my joke would make my two kids think that it's okay to disrespect their grandparents. I called my dad and stepmother, Sarah, and apologized to them for what I said, but I couldn't help but tell them that they should refrain from making bad comments about my mother, which they apologized for to both me, my wife, and my mom. I had a deeper talk with my dad, where he told me that he still feels guilty about cheating on my mom, and how he's jealous of how close I, my mom, and my wife are. He feels like he gets excluded from everything. I didn't realize how much I still resented my father. When my father cheated, I absolutely hated him because I saw him as a role model. I didn't realize what was happening until one of my cousins told me the truth. I told my dad that he was a bad husband to my mom, but he wasn't a bad father, and I thanked him for always being there for me and promised him that I would include him. I think the relationship between us is better now. My mom never remarried after my dad and is honestly living her best single life. She worked her ass off for years providing for me and she is one of the strongest women in my life. She is an incredible human being, so I do not appreciate the messages telling me my mom is an attention seeker and didn't change her outfit deliberately when I've already explained why she couldn't change. I was late to update because we are having baby number three, and it has been really emotional because the chances of us getting pregnant were really slim. Our twins were through IVF, so except for my parents and wife, you are all the first to know. Any and all advice on how to tell my two monkeys that they are going to be big brothers would be appreciated. Now in the comments, glad it was not only resolved, but progressed your relationship. One of my twin friends always makes the joke that he was born six minutes earlier and therefore has a vast amount more of worldly experience because of compounding interest. For only twin children, only twildren, if you will, I think it'll be fun going from having a sibling, but not being older and younger, to both getting to be the older brother. And OP replies, it sounds effective. And from your previous post, make sure the two monkeys don't fight over the baby monkey, winky face. Congrats on the new one, and congrats on turning a bad situation into progress with your dad. For what it's worth, I thought it was an overreaction on your dad and stepmom's part. Laugh it off, everyone laughs, family and owls. But then, special day, nerves frayed, also understandable. Couldn't even judge it back then. Congratulations on your new addition, but I do believe your dad and stepmom completely overreacted. Yeah. When I read the original all the way to the end, wondering when we were going to get the part where they did something all that bad, like throwing the cheating in their faces, no, just them not liking that they weren't the center of attention and the OP calling them out on it. And our next post is titled, Would I be the asshole if I didn't give my dad my password after I turn 18? I'm 17 female, currently living with my dad and my five siblings, and a junior in high school. I love my dad and think he is super supportive. He's just very controlling at times. He tracks my phone, which I did used to despise but now understand and appreciate, and I believe he monitors my texts. Haven't confirmed it yet, but I strongly suspect it. I recently changed my email password two weeks ago due to a security breach, and the day after I did, my dad asks me what I changed my password to. My password has been the same for years, and I knew that he knew it, I just never knew that he checked my emails. I had to leave for work, so I just sort of dodged the question because it surprised and confused me. A week passes, and he texted me yesterday demanding I give him my password. 
Due to living in his house and not wanting to disrespect and argue with him, I gave him it. Now it has me wondering if he could get mad if I changed my email password when I turn 18 soon. I'm scared to ask, just wondering if it would be disrespectful and rude to do so, even though I'm going to be an adult and don't want my dad snooping through my emails. My emails aren't even interesting, they're for school most of the time. Now in the comments, not the asshole. And frankly, his behavior is bonkers to me, even when you are still underage. You're a person and you're entitled to privacy. The next time you change your password, you have to draw a boundary about it and say, Dad, I love you, but I'm a grown up now and I deserve privacy in my communications. It's not up for negotiation. Not the asshole. But if he's paying for your college or helping you with a major financial burden, just make a second and don't tell him for the email. My parents are controlling and I'm 21 male in college. Just make it, don't ask, don't tell. And OP replies, yeah, he's helping me out with college, which I really appreciate. And this is probably what I'm going to do. Thank you. Just to clarify, your father helping you with school doesn't give him permission to invade your privacy, but he doesn't sound like the most reasonable person. So it's best not to anger him as he may decide to stop paying for your school. So only to avoid conflict and potential detriment to your future, consider getting a new email address, but allow him to keep reading the old one. It sucks that you have to do that, but your father's lack of boundaries hasn't given you much choice. Not the asshole. Honestly, I would recommend changing all of your passwords the moment you turn 18, getting a new phone and phone number, and getting the hell away from your father. Tracking your phone, reading your texts, reading your emails? That guy is so far beyond all boundaries that he is in the next solar system. OP replies, I have an okay paying job for my age and may consider this, yet I feel it may hurt my dad emotionally a lot if he thinks that I can't trust him. That being said, I might do it and just not tell him though. OP, his behavior is controlling and highly inappropriate. You don't need to put his feelings first. And now on to the update. I first want to thank everyone who responded and helped me out two years ago. It really helped me to get to a better place mentally. I'm now 19 female, about to start my sophomore year of college and about to move into an apartment. I spoke with my dad when I turned 18 like sat down and had a serious discussion with him about my boundaries and how as an adult, I have more freedoms and that he must respect that and he listened. He made me feel my feelings were valid and this last year, it seems that he's really changed. He isn't obsessed with my emails slash checking where I am. Lamal, being an adult has helped with that. I talked with him as well as to not like be as insane as he was with me with my younger siblings and so far, nothing yet. He's admitted he's used manipulation and gaslighting as a way to parent. I was shocked to hear him admit that. Will I still be cautious? Of course. But overall, my dad and I have come to an understanding of boundaries and I no longer live with the constant fear of being monitored. Thank you guys for everything and yeah, I'm much happier and recently came out as Pan, which my dad supports. And now in the comments, so glad it all worked out well. OP replies, thank you, me too. Um, yeah, your dad sucks for his actions before, but if you're okay and happy with your dad now, that is good to hear. It's so rare to hear about abusive parents actually admitting it and taking responsibility for it. Usually they are forever in denial or admit it, but claim it's the victim's fault for making them act like that. That alone is a pretty good sign. So I hope he continues to improve and I am so happy for you. Okay, but is he at all remorseful about that or just admitting to it? OP replies, he was remorseful and sees that's why his kids aren't that close to him, hence why he has started working on it. Parents make mistakes, some bigger than others as is the case here, and it is so refreshing to hear that he listened to you and is working on changing. Granted a bit too late for you, but hopefully he will calm down his monitoring for your younger siblings. What a good update. Glad that you worked things out.
Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.